Hey guys, I got my Mavic Pro, my Mavic Air, and my Spark. Today we're going to look at the testing I did of the image quality they produced. We're going to look at sharpness, we're going to look at dynamic range, image distortion, color, overall photo quality, overall video quality. We got it all for you. Stay tuned. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, we are back. And before we dive deep, I'll just say that some of the differences between these cameras are pretty clear and some are harder to see. Moral of the story is all the cameras are excellent. But to tell the details and the differences a little bit better, you can download all the pictures you're gonna see today, all the original shots we took with these three drones on our website, halfchrome.com, and you click on the link for free download and uh, you can take a look for yourself and see what you think. Now we're taking two kinds of pictures here. One group of pictures we're taking inside in our indoor lab with a really well lit image target designed to evaluate the detailed features of these cameras. And then the other set is we're gonna take this outside. We're gonna put all three drones up in the air and see their video quality side by side. Now back in the lab, let's take a little bit closer look at these image targets. Now this picture here is our target, an image taken with the prime lens on a Sony mirrorless camera. This is about as good as it's gonna get, guys, in terms of the quality. Now what are we gonna do with this? We're basically gonna just zoom in and look at a lot of the details on this picture or the pictures we take with the three drones. So in the middle of the image there, you're seeing a really detailed way of looking at the sharpness. And sharpness is one of the most important features of any camera, really. And we take another look at a little more colorful uh, section of the image down below, a picture of our niece chewing on a little toy drone. Top right there, you see uh, we crop out and take a look at the corner. And that's gonna be good at highlighting any image distortion there is or fisheye effect and uh, near the middle there, the dynamic range. So we've got really dark squares going in a gradient there all the way up to really light ones. And uh, you can t get a sense of how good the dynamic range of these cameras is. So let's uh, take a look. So first up in the center of the image, uh, really cropped out. We're just looking at 1% of the total area of these images. And uh, so you can really zoom in and see how sharp these images are. Now we've got the Mavic Pro in the middle there winning. A part of that is due to the fact that they have the sharpening algorithm cranked up pretty high in their image processing, which can sometimes actually be a bad thing. But as you will see with some of these, these other pictures, that actually the Mavic Pro is better over the full field of view uh, for other reasons as well. Uh, the Spark and the Air, just not quite as crisp. We would have to put the Air in second place here. Moving on to our favorite cute baby. Uh, we again put the Mavic Pro in the lead here. You're just able to pick out some of those detailed features, uh, some of the text on the drone she's chewing on there, uh, her bib, the yellow toy on the right of each image, the headband, the details around her eyes. It's not just due to the image sharpening algorithms of the Pro, it is indeed a little bit sharper than these other cameras. We're gonna talk about image distortion. Now, neither of these images here are from uh, the Mavic Pro, Mavic Air, or the Spark. Here we're comparing the GoPro Hero 4 to the Phantom 4. Now, why are we doing this? Just to show uh, image distortion. This is a comparison I have from some previous work that we did and show you what distortion really looks like. So really wide angle lenses tend to have this barrel distortion effect, otherwise known as fisheye. Now we do see a little bit of that in these drones, uh, but not nearly to that extent. So the Mavic Air and the Spark both exhibit a little barrel distortion. The Mavic Pro, however, is either completely corrected for digitally or just doesn't have it in the lenses. It's hard to tell. Uh, the Mavic Air, probably a little bit worse than the Spark. What you see here is something else in the Spark though, because they have the image stabilization handled digitally partially for the yaw axis, you see the picture you get when you snap a picture is actually a wider field of view than the one you see on your screen of your smartphone when you're flying the drone. Uh, what that means is you never know exactly what you're gonna get for the field of view. And in this case, uh, we're getting a little bit of a DRL 
uh, branded racing drone over there on the right uh, creeping into the image. Uh, but again, I would give the Mavic Air uh, worse marks for image distortion, but really not that bad. I don't think you're going to notice that uh, in taking videos outside. Okay, taking a look at color and saturation. Now, this is a different test target that we use inside. It's a bunch of lighthouses and classic cars. And uh, really here, surprisingly, uh, for this particular shot at least, we put the spark in the lead, the yellows on the Mavic Air just a little too exaggerated making the grass uh, look a little too yellow some of those trees and that car uh, looking almost neon on the bottom the Mavic Pro on the other hand the yellows a little too subdued and the spark seems to nail it just right uh, however we'll come back to this topic again we're looking at the videos and you'll see uh, really kind of put the spark and Mavic Air uh, on equal level in a lot of situations and sometimes I'm sure the Mavic Pro is going to look better as well. Okay, so dynamic range. The dynamic range of all three of these drones is not perfect, which is typical for any camera really. Our Sony uh, mirrorless camera wasn't able to capture all the different colors as well. And you see the Mavic Air top left and Mavic Pro top right, uh, missing some of the distinguishes between the total black and the slight gray color. Uh, the Spark on the other hand defaulted to a longer exposure and it bleeds together a couple of the white and the really light grays up there in the top on the bottom right of this image and then finally the Mavic Air HDR mode is pulling through and is quite effective it takes three pictures and blends the best of all three uh, one at nominal exposure one with double the exposure time and one with half the time and it's the only image that's actually able to capture all the white and all the black distinctions there so if you aren't using the Mavic Air, you do have the ability to do auto exposure bracketing, also known as AEB, using the Spark or the Mavic Pro, or you have the ability to take those images from exposure bracketing and combine those in uh, software on your computer. Uh, this here just shows the benefit, this, these pictures here taken with the Spark of having that bracketing. Uh, at a minimum, if you don't want to do uh, the HDR processing after the fact, you do at least get to select the exposure you like best and in this case from these images from the spark we like the one over on the right uh, seems to get the best sunset color and a more honest portrayal of the dark foreground all right so let's talk about the field of view uh, basically the phantom drones tend to be a little bit wider than the mavics and the spark and an iphone for reference is a little bit narrow a GoPro for reference in wide mode will go all the way out to around 120 degrees super wide and that contributes a lot to that distortion that we talked about before. Taking a look at the numbers you see uh, the Mavics all in the mid to high 60s in terms of the horizontal field of view that's what we measure here. These numbers do tend to line up with the diagonal field of views quoted by DJI. Uh, looking towards the top of the table you also see the Phantom 4 drones uh, getting wider there in the mid 70s to mid 80s in terms of the original Phantom 4 and again for reference the iPhone X down at 62 degrees now I put a distinction in there at the bottom between the spark in photo and the spark of video there is quite a bit of cropping in the video mode so it's worth mentioning and again that's due to the image stabilization that they use so let's take a look at low light performance Now this is a quick shot in the basement of all of our junk but you can see there in the background in the dark region of the image our image target back there you can see some LEDs glowing on one of these drones and all of our bright lights are turned off so I can't tell you how dark this room is there's barely any light in there and uh, so that's how we take our pictures for these low light exposures all three pictures were taken with the same exposure settings all set to ISO 1600 and a quarter of a second exposure now no surprise here with all sensors being the same size really the lowest F number wins the Mavic Pro coming in with the brightest crispest and most clear image uh, the spark in maybe second place there but really on par with the Mavic Air the Mavic Air does have an updated sensor at least we're led to believe so uh, which helps out with some of that sensitivity as well but again a little bit more yellow of an image from the air at least in this lighting situation 
All right, so let's talk about the overall image quality. Really what this comes down to is the quality of the camera itself. So if you play with the settings, what do you, we think you're going to be able to pull out of these images? We think you're going to be happiest with the Mavic Pro. That being said, in a lot of ways, the Mavic Air may be easier for most people to use. Fewer choices, better defaults in some ways, uh, but the Mavic Pro is the best camera. All right, so that's enough of the stuff inside. Let's take it outside for some video quality comparison. Not the brightest here in Chicago in the winter. We've got some grays, but I was actually pretty impressed here with the Mavic Air, its ability to pull color out of almost nothing and turn that water a little bit blue and grass a little bit green when I thought everything was just going to be gray. We got the kids out playing on the swing sets here and we will take a look at these drones one by one and then side by side. So first up is the Mavic Air. Happy with this. Find it to be a pretty true rendering of the colors, good exposure, and all the above. It just is a nice looking 4K video. Next up with the Mavic Pro, uh, this is the default exposure which is overexposed uh, as we're used to with the Mavic Pro. Default video setting also a little bit uh, high on the contrast and sharpness and uh, just not our favorite default setting so we recommend you play around with those but you do get lots of crisp features out of this video. And finally onto the Spark, a little bit more friendly color scheme again, in our opinion. And uh, let's look at those side by side in a little more detail. And what you can see here again, the Spark you'll notice is a bit more cropped as we mentioned before in video with that 55 degree horizontal field of view. You see the Mavic Pro does indeed look the sharpest uh, con contributions there both from the quality of the camera and their sharpening algorithm and again you can see how on the little girl's jacket up top it does seem to be a little bit blown out a little bit too bright of an exposure so in summary which one of these would we rather take out to capture a quick video I'm gonna go with the Mavic Air actually uh, Mavic Pro it's just a little too easy to screw up too easy to be out of focus if you forget to hit tap focus uh, too easy to have your exposure messed up. So we think for most people who are doing everyday videography, actually we prefer the Mavic Air for most people. The Mavic Pro, however, again, if you know what you're doing, probably going to get you the best video at the end of the day. And the Spark, with its ability only to record in 1080p, is not going to win any battles there. Now, finally, we did have to compare one more thing. We had to compare this to an iPhone, in this case, the latest and greatest iPhone X. And unfortunately, we find uh, while the Mavic Pro may be the best camera in this lineup, it still doesn't hold up to the iPhone. So we can't wait for the Mavic Pro 2, which should be announced hopefully any day, any week, at least any month now. And uh, really, we can, we can hope to see the image quality improve even more on uh, these consumer and prosumer drones from DJI. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and uh, check out our website again to get the download of all of these images that you saw today.